Tsunami Studios. Black Knight, Curse of the Ebony Blade, issue number one. That's right, folks. Because the character is going to be making an appearance in the Eternals movie, played by Jon Snow himself, Kit Harington, we are seeing a Black Knight book making its appearance. And wow, wow. <laughs> like, this didn't have to go as hard as it did. Now, I know Cy Spurrier's, he everyone loves him. Like, the, the guy is on a roll. I wasn't expecting this to be so good. It makes sense from the guy that did a great Hellblazer series that this is the book we get. Holy shit. It actually blew my mind. Like, I wasn't expecting a Black Knight book to be this good or intriguing. But wow, did this surprise me. So, there's an idea going out through this book. I'm not going to touch on it all the way through. I'll bring it up at the beginning. This idea in place that Dane Whitman has been talking to this like listening AI that's supposed to be like a comfort thing for people grieving or having this therapy session. And he's basically talking about like why he's a hero and like why he does this stuff. Like he thinks the other heroes in the world don't like him or don't respect him. And we'll get into that in a bit here. And because like the only way for him to get stronger is to get like more hateful and angry, not in terms of like the Hulk where you're growing more powerful if you're anger, but you have to be like hated and hate everything and be this terrible person. And he doesn't like that. So he comes like this facade of himself and this person that isn't really, really him. And it's kind of like a mask he wears to wear a mask. You're like, what? <laughs> I wasn't expecting that from a Black Knight book, but here we are. Here's some crazy shit happening in a Black Knight book. So this story is basically the Avengers are fighting these weird creatures that can come back from like regenerative abilities and all this stuff. And they, they're kind of losing the battle. And there's only one person that could come in to help them. And it's Black Knight. But of course, none of them really want Black Knight to help because the Black Knight sucks, according to all these people. So he's just like having fun, taking everything down, talking old timey and doing all this great stuff. And everyone's like this, this guy. Why, why are you doing this? Thor's like, are you making fun of me? Like with all the thighs and these and everything. He's like, nah, dude, it's just how I do things. So he sliced him through. He's having a great time. And everyone's like, this guy's a little bit like eccentric, more like annoying, more like troubling. <laughs> You're like, oh, really breaking my heart here. And it's pretty cool because they're just like, we need him because he does the thing that people don't really understand. But Thor's like, I could do it fine. So Thor tries to pick up the ebony blade, but it doesn't work. And he's kind of getting pissed like, why can't I lift your sword? I'm better than you in every regards of the word. You are just a pale imitation of me is pretty much what Black Knight is. He's like, huh, Thunderer, you mistook something for something else. And the only reason you cannot lift it is because it can only be lightened by shadow. And it's like, you have to be hate and terrible and a bad person to use it and you're pure as might all the way around it's like the opposite of Mjolnir and you're like what that's cool I mean I know enough about the Black Knight where I could probably hold my own in a conversation about the character but to say I know every interpretation every storyline I don't this is great this is cool. I, I I didn't have that idea. It's like it's gonna be powered by hate, and the ebony blade like uses like the the hate to fuel itself. You're like, that's pretty cool. That's great. That, it was just so fun. So everyone's like, good job, Dane. I guess you did good here. We like you a little bit more because of it. And we see that this is like happening after the events of him talking to listener. He also says that he's when he's talking to listener, like I'm gonna meet like a like a academic type like she's somebody that like studied ancient history and like arthurian legends and stuff so i'm gonna ask her about the blade like she's not like a therapist she's just somebody that might like might be able to tell me who i am what my place in this world is supposed to be like what's going on with me maybe she'll be able to answer that question for me and we see that while he's talking to the listener, he gets the call, like the alert from the Avengers as to why they need him to come down. He's like, oh, cool. The Avengers are asking for me specifically. I got to go, computer that I'm just talking to. I got to go. Goodbye. I, I got to go. So he's very excited. He's just having fun when he's with the Avengers. He's just talking to Cap like, yeah, we should get some drinks after this. Like, go go out to a place. I know it's a great place. Like, it's 10 a.m., dude. He's like, fine. We'll just have a beer and all that stuff. It's very cool. So there's like kicking ass and like these things keep regenerating they're like we're gonna have to like destroy this on a molecular level and that's why they called dane and he's like what you guys you guys didn't call me because you wanted to like hang out he's so he's so sad about it but he's like of course they don't want to hang out with me nobody wants to hang out with me i'm black knight <laughs> 
So he uses all his anger and all this weird stuff, making everybody feel bad about it. And no one's making eye contact with him, so he does his weird power up, destroys all the beings, and it looks really cool. It is such a fun thing to see, like a full Super Saiyan looking Black Knight destroys them on a molecular level. Very cool to see. I thought that was so fun, so engaging, just a really different thing than I think what people would be expecting. So the other part of this book too, we are seeing that this historical lady who is goes by Jax, she is just coming to like Dane's house. It's a giant castle, of course, because what else would it be? <laughs> Dane's just one of those guys, right? So she's just like, okay, that's weird. And I, I, re I forgot something before we did that. So she goes to investigate Dane's house. But before that, we see that this like weird character who like whispers things comes to like attack the Avengers and he's taking them all down. And like they're just like stuck with something they can't do. It's like old magic. And because Dane is experienced with old magic, he's like, you can't stop me. But you know, it does stop him a blade to the head and he gets decapitated. And the Avengers are like, oh my God, he died. He just literally died right in front of us. I forgot about that scene. I'm like, yeah, because it comes crucial later on. Dane just died in front of the Avengers from like some old timey, like magical wizard dude who was whispering secrets that broke the Avengers. That's creepy. So we see the Jax is like walking through stuff. It's like, this guy's really weird. What troubles does this lunatic have that can't be solved with all his money? His butler's like, well, you don't really know it. Like he's been through a lot. So th th he's like, we're gonna have to like postpone your meeting with Dane because something's happened. She's like, oh, come on. What did he, what could possibly happen to Dane that would like stop me from meeting him? It's like, oh, he died. Oh, shit. Okay, I guess, I guess can't meet him, but she was kind of only here. She doesn't give a shit about Dane Whitman. She's like, I want to see the Ebony Blade. Can I please touch it? It's like, no, you can't touch it. So when she does, she gets like sent back to like this weird like idea of the history of the blade she's like seeing like it's creation while it's being forged and this like weird raven or dove thing is talking to her you're like this is really cool very fun it's like a great way to just, like show the history to the world like at large in your audience without them like feeling like it's pandering you know like you don't you don't know black knight here you go they forged it years ago there's been different interpretations of the character it's a very scary weapon very intense and it's camelot baby camelot baby <laughs> oh it's so cool I was not expecting this to be as fun as it was. So we see that, like, Jax, she wakes up. She's like, what the hell did I just see? And as you're doing that, the Ebony Blade is, like, coming to life in this weird way on Dane's corpse. And it's, like, consuming him with, like, this weird blood. And, like, the butler and Jax are like, what's going on? And we see that, like, suddenly Dane stands up like, hi, you must be, like, the lady who's like, knows history. I have some questions. And she's like, uh, oh, uh. <laughs> it's so good a black knight comic book is good and weird and interesting and intricate and thought out and somebody really did their research on the character and tried to make this cool like really weird it's so weird how good this was i was not expecting the black knight book to be as this impressive this interesting this creative this emotionally satisfying i really liked it like the relationship that dane has with the avengers how he's wearing a mask to put on his mask so people don't actually know who he is or how he feels how he constantly lies to himself how the other heroes in the world don't care for him how he's just kind of like a weapon used to do certain things and how his history is so complicated that you can't even explain it it's really good it's really good i love it i'm just blown away that we're having this book exist because it's so intricate and detailed i love that we're going to this area of the marvel universe again like the arthurian legend like the weird like like shakespearean feeling storytelling where everything's so over the top and dramatic it is so unique and fun i love this book it's going to make you like this character Cy Spurrier continues to impress with everything he does. What a fantastic read. I really think this is worth your time, worth your effort, and worth your money. It is so bizarrely good. And we see him die and be resurrected. So there's obviously some weird legacy curse. They say it's a curse. That's the name of the book, actually. But it's so great. It's so fun to see that this is the story. Like, of course, the sword is the actual monster here. That's a really cool story. I love it so much. So, Black Knight, Curse of the Ebony Blade, issue number one. I am going to give a 9 out of 10.
Now, thank you guys so much for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.